hopefully, uh, Mr. Daisy, you're with us, but it's my pleasure to introduce him. I had the great honor to meet him just about six months ago when he began posting some of the photos and images you'll see today. Um, I want to stress from a historic perspective uh, that the images, some of which you'll see tonight, uh, cover three centuries of Lewis history, the 18th, 19th, uh, 20th centuries, and a couple of 21st ones in there too every once in a while. Uh, but they not only have elicited online uh, responses and memories uh, and sharing of stories, what they are doing is they are, they are letting history come to life. Uh, some of the locations uh, such as the uh, parade ground uh, on Ship Carpenter Square is depicted. Uh, interior shots from, uh, from St. Paul's Church are depicted. And indeed, as well as we talk tonight, some images of Johnny Walker Beach. Uh, and very, very pleased and honored that um, Mr. Daisy has, on behalf of the family, uh, about 350 photos, I think, total, you'll say. I could be less, I could be more. But uh, about 100 of those photos he has generously given on loan uh, for the Lewis Historical Society to digitize, uh, enhance, and restore so that they can be marked as a part of history. And uh, June 30th, uh, in conjunction with the oral histories, uh, we will be featuring a film with some of those images in it known as Voices Heard. So thank you. Look forward to seeing what you have for us tonight. Mr. Daisy, if you wouldn't mind giving us a little of your own background. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm glad everyone, uh, first of all, First of all, to follow up on your Dean Tillman comments, um, um, my twin brother and I know Dean Tillman from the past, and he's an excellent artist. So um, certainly if people in Lewis get an opportunity to go see his work, please do. He did some great depictions of the old Negro baseball leagues, which were really fascinating. So he did a really good job. So hopefully everyone can hear me well. Yes. Is that yep. true? Yes. Yep. OK, good. Well. First of all, let me say I'm honored to be asked to speak to the Lewis African American Heritage Commission, especially for your Black History Month meeting. My name is Daryl Daisy. I'm one of eight children of William and Shirley Daisy. I was born in Lewis in 1961, but moved when I was only four years old. Uh, naturally, my individual memories of Lewis would not be of interest to this group. <laughs> you guys have a much more expansive knowledge of that than I do. But I would like to share a bit of our family's uh, 250 years of history in Lewis. Um, uh, you know, while I haven't lived in Lewis since 1965, I have studied my family history for the last 30 years. With the help of my parents and a number of relatives and friends, we've created a pretty extensive family genealogy, particularly uh, facilitated by the fact that my father's family history goes back to Lewis so many generations. So that was helpful that you didn't have to go too many places to find your family history. Um, so we were also very fortunate to be able to discover some photographs that helps us kind of illustrate that history to our family, as well as hopefully to, to help um, enrich the, um, the uh, story or telling of the story of the African-American history of Lewis in general. So with that, Kayla, I don't know if you're running the slideshow. Okay, Kayla's running the slideshow. Okay, good. All right. First of all, um, Kayla, will you go to page two? All right. First of all, it, it kind of starts with Nanakote Indians. Um, we, uh, some Nanakote descendants, John Corsi and Elizabeth Sammons, is sort of the beginning. We actually know who John's father was. It was Mills Corsi. Don't know much else about him, like when he came to Lewis, but he was certainly in Lewis at some point because he purchased some land there. But we'll start with John and Elizabeth. They were our fourth great grandparents. Um, they had seven children. They, they lived around uh, the Shady Road area uh, near the intersection of Route 1 and Shady Road. Um, their daughter, Lydia Corsi, uh, in 1950, married James Alfred Daisy, right? Alfred Daisy was born in 1809. He passed or died in around 1900 or beyond. We know he was alive in 1900. He wasn't alive in 1910. So somewhere in that, in that area, he passed away. But Alfred's origins are kind of unclear to us. The family lore is that Alfred was a Native American that came from the woods uh, 
and assimilated into the Lewis, Delaware communities from New Jersey, right? Uh, no records kind of support that. Most of the records we found show that he was from Delaware. Uh, and also, since his last name was Daisy, which this is the first uh, Daisy in our family that we can identify, and there was a lot of white daisies in the area, you know, it's a, it's a name that a number of white uh, citizens in Lewis have. Um, we think there's a connection, but we don't really know what that connection is. Um, so we're, we're still trying to figure it out. Marcos has presented some theories and, you know, around, you know, a lot of times uh, ex-enslaved people uh, took the names of their former masters and things like that. But um, also Native Americans from time to time also just adopted names of local people as well. So we really don't know. So we have to do some more digging. But moving past that, Lydia and Alfred Daisy are third, three ex great grandparents. Uh, she was a washerwoman and he was what they called a laborer. Uh, which was a common occupation uh, for people of color back then. Neither of them could read or write. That, that shouldn't be surprising back at that time period as well. Now, I will say that John Corsi, his father Mills Corsi, Elizabeth Sammons, Lydia Daisy, James Alfred Daisy, uh, and a number of Lydia's siblings are buried out at the Corsi Daisy Nanako Indian Burial Grounds, which is, again, at Shady Road in the intersection of Route 1. My father uh, and some relatives worked hard to kind of get that marker set up, but also to protect that grave site from a developing uh, housing development that came that was built around it. So it's actually one marker uh, that's fenced in, and then the housing development was built around it. So they were able to protect that area. But 23 of my uh, relatives from that time period are buried at that location. All right. In 1880, we do know that Lydia Daisy purchased a house for $2,000, which is about 58,000 of today's dollars, from former Sheriff James Russell. Uh, that house is now at what's 333 Savannah Road. I think it was called South Street or something at the time. Um, the house is still owned by our family. Uh, we don't know why Alfred Daisy didn't get involved in the purchase because he was around before and after the purchase. Uh, that's another little mystery, but you know, hopefully we'll figure that out one day. Looking at some of the pictures to the right, James Alfred Daisy is depicted in a sketch uh, in the upper uh, left-hand side of that of the pictures. You see the the, the um, markers, the burial ground markers in there, as well as the tombstone for the whole family. But to the bottom right, you'll see what is really today's depiction of. 333 Savannah Road. That's the family property. Can you go to the next page, please, Kayla? Thank you. Lydia and Alfred bore uh, 12 children. Only eight of them survived to childhood. One of them was Maggie Daisy, or Margaret Daisy. She was born at the time the Civil War started in 1865. She's our 2X great grandmother. She had three children, all of whom were raised at 333 Savannah Road. You'll start to see a theme here about that house. Um, those three children were Benjamin Harrison Daisy, William S. Daisy, and Sarah, we called her Sally, uh, Waples Daisy, and she was our great-grandmother. Right? And you see, uh, neither Benjamin nor uh, William had any children, but Sarah did have two kids, including our grandmother, uh, Florine Daisy. To the right, you see pictures of those three, and, and Benjamin Daisy from the 1920s, so he would have been in his uh, mid, early 30s, mid 30s. Uh, Sarah Daisy from the 1930s, and William S. Daisy at, with his World War I uniform on. I'm gonna focus a little bit on these three right now because they really were instrumental in uh, launching my family, getting, you know, setting my family up for success and moving forward in Lewis. So we'll focus on them and then we'll hop out a little bit back to the family structure. So Kayla, can you move to the next page, please? Get a little water here. The next person I wanna to talk to about is Benjamin Harrison Daisy. He was born in 1889. He is my great, great uncle. He also lived at 333 Savannah Road his entire life. Uh, he had several occupations, but the last one was listed as a house mover, which I didn't even know was an occupation back at that time, but apparently 
they moved houses as well as as they do today um well uncle ben was never married uh he played an instrumental role in helping to raise both my grandmother and my father um and so much so if you you know um that you know i actually when i had my firstborn child we actually named him after uncle ben because even though i don't remember uncle ben because uh, i was only four years old when he passed away um he obviously had a major impact on our family. To the right, you'll see some pictures of Uncle Ben. To the uh, upper left, you'll see a picture of him as a boy with his dogs. That road behind you is, is what's Savannah Road today. If you look to the top left-hand corner, you can probably see a horse and buggy uh, on the road, so you know what they were driving back then. The next picture to the right is Uncle Ben. He's on the left-hand side of the picture. Um, it's from 1930. Uh, we know that because the license plate says 1930, and back then you got a new plate every year. And to the right is a gentleman we believe to be one of the Gooches. That's what the folks on the website said. Just haven't identified which specific Gooch that is. To the bottom is a picture I really treasure. And again, I don't really remember Uncle Ben, but there's a picture of my twin brother and I uh, with Uncle Ben probably a year or so before he passed away. Kayla, next page, please. Our great-great-uncle Bill, um, born in 1892, um, he uh, is, my father was actually named after him as well as my older brother. Uh, in, in 1920, um, um, he purchased a 50-year-old house at 111 Coleman Avenue shortly after he returned to World War I. And I do want to mention during World War I, uh, he was exposed to mustard gas which caused him to uh, be ill for the rest of his life and to cut his life short. He ended up dying in, in 1941 at the age of 49 years old. But in 1923, uh, after he purchased his house, he, he wed Elsie Stokely, who um, born in 1899. His occupation was a chauffeur driver while she cleaned houses. We speculate that he learned how to drive during World War I because obviously there probably wasn't a lot of cars around. Uh, before he went off to war, so he probably didn't have a lot of cars to drive. Some family lore, again, no particular documentation, says that he drove for the BB family a little bit. He also, as you can uh, see from the picture at the bottom uh, right-hand side, he, he drove some bus line uh, routes as well. Um, the couple resided at that Coleman family home until Uncle Bill passed away in 1941 at the age of 49. And Elsie lived there until she remarried uh, we called him Uncle Dan, uh, Daniel Drain, in 1956. At that point, they moved out to sort of the outskirts of Lewis. Could be Belltown, but I haven't found the address yet uh, to verify what that what that is. But in 1985, uh, when she wanted to uh, move in with her daughter, uh, beyond when Uncle Dan had passed away, uh, she sold the house in order to keep it in the family uh, to her two godsons, one of them being me, the other being my twin brother. Um, and we'll get back to Aunt Elsie a little bit later, but we can go to the next page, Kayla. The last of those three siblings is my great-grandmother, uh, and we called her Mom Sally, but Sarah was her name. My oldest sister was actually named after her. Um, she, she resided, again, at 333 Savannah Road, uh, but moved to Wilmington, Delaware, when she married Jane Sewell in 1921. But prior to her marriage, Sarah gave birth to a son, Aaron Ward, and my grandmother, Florine Daisy. Her real name was Pearl, but I didn't know that, I think, until she, after she passed away. Uh, she gave birth to uh, Florine in 1917. Now, she played a big role in our family in the fact that when my father uh, finished 11th grade in the, in the Lewis school systems, because the schools, as you know, didn't have, didn't have a 12th grade, and he had a choose if he was going to complete school, did he go to Dell State uh, College or go to, up to Howard High School, he was able to move in with her in Wilmington uh, with her husband and, and, and complete his high school education, which obviously was instrumental in him getting advanced degrees later on and helping our family, you know, uh, along the way, helping him provide for his family. Again, as I said, my oldest sister was named after um, Mom Sally and to the, to the to the bottom right, you see a picture of 
of Mom Sally with my sister when my sister was a was a, a baby. Uh, to, if you look to the top, you see Mom Sally in the 1920s, so she would have been in her mid 20s at that point in time, and then the 1930s, the 1940s, uh, and in the 1950s with my sister. So that's my uh, great grandmother, Mom Sally. Kayla, can go to the next page. All right. This is my grandmother. So this is Mom Sally's uh, daughter. So this was grandmother. She was born and lived at, again, 333 Savannah Road until her marriage to Elmer Street in 1939. Elmer Street was from the Millsboro area, uh, Ellendale, Millsboro area. But prior to her marriage, she bore three children. One was my father in 1931. Uh, if you do the math there, she was 14 years old when she uh, gave birth to my father. And second was my Uncle Vernon in 1935. Uh, and my Aunt Tilly, we called her, her name was Margaret, but we called her Tilly in 1936. Following her marriage, she moved to, to an Ellendale farm, and the couple had an additional, and this isn't a typo, 17 children. Right? Uh, there was one set of triplets, and there were a few sets of twins, but 17 children. Elmer Street also had nine children from a previous marriage, so together, you know, they raised like 29 children in all. So it's a very big family in that, that Ellendale area. Um, uh, but of all those people, most of their names are street. So really only Uncle Vernon's children kept the name Daisy. And he had um, four boys and a girl, uh, Blaine Daisy. I know has been in Lewis forever and Brother Andre as well. Um, and so some of you may know Blaine and, and those folks. So now my, my grandma was a very, very caring woman, very loving, loved to visit her. Didn't like the fact she lived on the farm, however, because you go there and you know they go milk the cow and then they try to pour that same milk into my cereal and being a <laughs> suburban kid you know that wasn't particularly what i wanted in my cereal uh i wanted my milk to be pasteurized and harmonized and everything else you know uh and they were they were a little bit too natural for me so but it was always pleasant visiting my uh, grandmother in uh, uh in the at the ellendale farm so kayla you can go to the next page Now, we talk about my parents a little bit. You know, first, my father, who actually lived in Lewis, he was born in 1931, lived in Lewis on and off for the first 34 years of his life. Um, and he married Shirley Street, my mother, in uh, 1951. My mom's from the Millsboro area. She was actually born in South Jersey, but lived in Millsboro a big chunk of her life. They lived at the Savannah Roadhouse for a while. They also lived at a Lewis Beach House. They lived outside Lewis a little bit before they settled in at 331 Chestnut Street uh, for the first years of their marriage. I think they moved in Chestnut Street in the late 1950s. The Chestnut Street property is also still owned uh, by my family. The couple had five children prior to moving to Oakland, California in 1961, I mean 65. Uh, they would have one more child and adopt two other children later. Uh, the family moved to Paulsboro, New Jersey in 1969 and then back to Dover, Delaware in 1978 where my parents resided for the rest of their lives. My mother passed in 2014 and my father passed November uh, 25th of 2021. Uh, 18 days later, my oldest brother, Billy, we call him, uh, passed in December of 2021. Um, uh, my dad did go on later to earn his master's degree. After getting his master's degree at Dell State, he got his master's at Rowan College in New Jersey. He became a vice principal in Lake Forest School District for a long while, uh, city, a Dover City Councilman, uh, assistant register of deeds. Also, at, at, for several years, he was chief of the Nanticoke Indian Tribe in Millsboro. Um, and surely my mom, in addition to raising eight children, which obviously was a fun task, um, she would become a 30 plus year leader in the Girl Scout and you know, well recognized for that activity as well. If you look to the pictures to the right, you see a picture of my, the first picture of my parents shortly after they were married. Uh, to the right of that is the family back in 1961. 
my twin and I were babies, and you see my siblings, Sarah, Debbie, and Billy at the bottom at our feet, uh, which they probably should do more often, you know, kneel to us, be at our feet, but <laughs> they didn't embrace that philosophy. Um, and then you have a picture of my parent, my, my father, my mother, and my brother who, who are no longer with us. But to the bottom right is the current family. As I said, we lost three, but we also picked up three since we left uh, Lewis. So uh, we're still with the same number of seven family members. Go to the next one, Kayla. As I promised, I wanted to get back to Ann Elsie. Uh, because she's part of why we're here. Um, and Elsie was my godmother. Her maiden name was Stokely, and uh, her I think she was raised by people with the name Miller, so her stepfather's name was Miller. Uh, she was my godmother and my great-great-aunt. When I was um, uh, baptized or christened in Lewis at St. Paul's uh, Method, United Methodist Church, um, she was actually 62 years old. You know, you didn't think she'd hang around, but she lived to be 101 years old. So I was almost 40 when she passed away. Um, she had a sixth grade education, but which wasn't particularly unusual for a colored woman back at that period of time. But she worked as a domestic her whole life. But Aunt Elsie had an enormous zest for life. She was always on the go, always on the move. She loved to travel. She traveled around the world. Don't know how she did that, given her job as a, as a, a you know, cleaning houses for the most part, but she did. And apparently she liked to take photographs because she had a lot of them. Um, and Elsie would outlive two husbands, uh, including, and she would also outlive her only child, which was Mildred Stokely Reddings. Uh, she was a very active and very uh, loyal uh, member of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, as long as her health would permit it. Um, and it seemed that since she outlived so many people, as relatives passed away, their possessions kind of seemed to fall to Aunt Elsie and then ultimately fall to my father because in 1992, when uh, Aunt Elsie's daughter, who she was living with, passed away, Aunt Elsie moved in with my parents uh, until her passing in 2000, the year 2000. And she kept many old photographs, and we knew that. She had some pictures. And most of them were kept in this gold-colored can that she had. And I had, you know, I was fortunate. I actually, at, at certain stages, took the opportunity to speak to her about those uh, photographs. I was really secretly trying to put together a, a photo album to, for her one of her birthdays. I'm not sure which one it was. And I needed to label some of the pictures. So I was sort of, you know, egging her on about what is this picture, what's that picture, who's in this picture. And because of that, I was able to identify probably more photographs than what we were able to, would have been able to if we had not went through that exercise. And um, if you go to the next page, Jayla. And that brings us to the photographs, right? So, um, one second. So I said earlier, my father passed away December of 2021. I mean, November of 2021. My brother passed in December of 2021. And later on, that a little bit the next, earlier that next year, my, my siblings and I start attempting to clean out their house a little because the goal was we'd probably end up selling the home. We end up selling it to one of our sisters, so it wasn't as necessary as we thought, but we at the time we didn't know that. And my parents, as I said, they were getting all this stuff passed down, so their attic and basement were flooded with stuff. And one of the things my siblings easily passed on was every photograph and document they threw at me because they understood I was kind of the family historian, the family geologist. So um, as you know, later in the years, I got a chance and opportunity to, to sort through some of those uh, photographs and stuff. Um, I discovered uh, some I thought might be interesting to people. Some I thought I wanted to help to identify who people was. And I discovered the Facebook page, Memories of Lewis. And so I start posting a couple of pictures on this Facebook page. At the time, we didn't know, our family didn't know that Lewis had been searching for a number of photographs that would better or fully, more fully represent the African-American life in Lewis. So we didn't know that and uh, was really surprised by some of the attention and, and, and um, that we got from doing that. 
And so between September, uh, and I was encouraged to keep doing it, so I, I kept doing it. Um, and between September and today, I have posted over 350 photos onto the site where the site members have been really helpful in helping to identify many of the people and the events that were depicted there. Like I knew we had a, a, a number of pictures of this parade, but I had no idea what the parade was. Um, you know, so the, the, the people helped identify what that was. I had a number of pictures about people killing hogs and again, not sure what that was all about, right? Uh, why you take pictures of people killing hogs. But then I saw a video and it talked about hog killing day and people quickly um, recognize that what that was and just and just identifying individuals and including themselves in some of the photographs was really uh, exciting to get that information I've been trying to document that on the website itself as well as in my own notes and then also I guess it talked the attention of the Lewis Historical Society and I, I would say my family is really thrilled and, and really appreciate Marcos and Denise and, and, and some of their efforts but really thrilled that we were able to recently loan the Lewis Historical Society uh, about 70 pictures. I count only 70, not counting some of the artifacts that we loaned them, uh, 70 pictures for an upcoming exhibit as well as other purposes, because we hope that, you know, not only will it help sort of enrich that telling of the African-American story of Lewis, but also I think my, my I know my parents, I know my Aunt Elsie, I know my Uncle Ben, my Uncle Bill, my grandmother, uh, my great grandmother would be thrilled to know that they were helpful in, in telling that story. So I think that in itself, you know, is very uh, rewarding for our family. So we really appreciate that because we know we have a long heritage in Lewis and we want to make sure that we maintain that connection past my parents' lives. And Kayla, if you want to go to the last page. And the last, the last page is just sort of a very direct line family tree. There's 10 generations of <laughs> our family here and Mills Corsi is depicted. So if you do the math, it's a 250 years that we go back into Lewis, Delaware. And so we, you know, we're really um, uh, hopeful we can add to the story. My, as, as mentioned earlier in the presentation, my family does uh, have a few properties that we have in Lewis now. A couple of them are over 150 years old. My siblings and I had the opportunity to speak to my father prior to him passing um, and talked about what we could do with those properties to make sure not only um, do they sort of um, pay homage to the family, but also to the history of the Lewis African American communities. Uh, and so we've developed some, some plans to do that. But in addition to that, we want to make sure that our family members, our, our children and grandchildren find utility in those facilities because they don't have the, the roots yet in Lewis or, or any roots in Lewis. So we'll make sure that they value those properties as well. So um, just let you know, we, we, we plan on continue to hopefully enhance some things in, in Lewis, Delaware. And, and with that, you know, don't know if, if this is a question and answer period or, uh, I, you know, this is the conclusion of, of my presentation. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I just wanted to thank um, Daryl for enriching <laughs> the Lewis family's life, especially the African American uh, family, but the community as a whole. Because we know, you know, when when we look out in the community, we don't see this history um, any longer, and when. Daryl started to show us these pictures and, and I know Marcos and almost everybody in here can attest. I, I never thought we would see, his, um, I thought that history was lost, Daryl. I, I thought that we could not find pictures from the 20s or the 30s, let alone the 1800s, <laughs> you know. So that that has really um, been a bright spot uh, in in this continue continuing story, and I'm am it's it's almost overwhelming to to see. And when we started the African American Heritage Commission, we didn't know that 
it would lead to lead to this beautiful treasure of pictures and the and the memories of Lois Facebook page, which um, I kind of administrate now and um, help trying to identify. It has encouraged others to post pictures and and make comments and remarks, and you've seen that as well. So I want to I want to thank you for. Um, your contribution to 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 Lewis and the generations that your family ha have has lived here. Uh, yeah, and, and Trina, I, I want to make sure I understand this. Those photos did not come from me; they came from my descendants and my family. So it's not not just me, and and also the fact that you created that page. One of the things that does for us is once I put stuff like that online, it's it it can be out there forever, right? instead of deteriorating in a can. Uh, even though that can did a good job protecting a lot of the pictures, <laughs> ultimately they would have been lost, right? right? If we didn't get those out there. And Marcos and the, the Lewis Historical Society helping to um, you know, enhance some of those photos that are a little bit damaged and, and, and hoping, hopefully the better they look, the better they can help tell the story or and, 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 and enhance what you already have because they're there's some really good stuff that's already there, but hopefully this helps fill it in a little bit. And like I said, my family really is excited to be a part of that. It's not uh, an effort at all. But, you know, plus I can get rid of some of the stuff that my siblings dumped on me, by the way, <laughs> from cleaning out my parents' house. So get rid of some of those pictures is, is important as well. But we really, uh, really appreciate being able to work with, it, with both the uh, African American Historical uh, Heritage Commission and the Lewis Historical Society. And I wanted to say, I wanted to correct, um, I did not start the Memories of Facebook page. I believe Mr. Charles Turner, who was a uh, life, uh, well, me a member of Lewis community, um, he did, and I just kind of picked it up um, okay. as time went went over and he made me an, an administrator of the page. So <laughs> I just kept, just kind of kept it going. He just so moved I do back want to give him. Right? I just want to give him yeah. a, um, a a he was the one, <laughs> and I just kind of took the ball and rolled with it. <laughs> but it has encouraged other pages like um, Dodge Families. Lewis is another page that um, features African American Heritage uh, Commission. I mean African American um, uh, families, and that was. Uh, started by Miss uh, Tacola Gibbs Hernandez and so I you know we have to give credit where credit's due we we all are trying to um, rede redevelop and reestablish the history that could be lost if we don't do it Anybody else? okay another comments I just wanted to make a quick one I don't know if it's possible to bring any of the slides back up or not but if so um, slide number nine, when you, you speak of uh, William S. Deasy, this the serviceman, um, I just want to comment too that how unique, I mean, these, these photographs are, are essentially what you call a historian's dream. <laughs> um, they are going to continue uh, the conversation, they're going to continue the preservation, but each time um, we learn more and more, um, I think it's maybe one bad, uh, if it's if you go back to the serviceman, just I want to point out that, um, yep, yeah, keep going back. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. There we are. The top right corner, um, this is again as you, as you identify a family member who was in the service and how this story continues. It might be hard to see, but as we put these, as we enhance these photos, we put them on display, he is wearing his service medal on his, on his chest, and that is the, um, that was the service medal. Uh, that many uh, many Americans brought back, and again, just each time you look at these photos, each time we share these photos, they're going to tell more and more of the story, uh, and reach more and more branches. So again, to thank you for for opening this path, we're going to continue down it every which way it can go. And the one thing that we do when we see pictures like this, and uh, is we don't just look at just like Marcos mentioned the picture, we also look to see what's in the background. Absolutely. And to see if we can pick up a little tidbit of, of 
whatever. And so that has also identified some streets and and some. We know homes. the route of that <laughs> bus now. We know that that left from Market Street would have gone to Atlantic Avenue in Rehoboth. Right. We we can again just learn more and more. And um, I don't know if there was anyone online who would like to uh, say anything, um, but uh, you have an opportunity to um, say say anything to Mr. Daisy or to the commission as far as uh, his presentation. We'd love to hear from you. Please consider sharing yourselves. <laughs> if has. Oh, I see a hand raised. Go ahead. Should I allow him to yeah. talk? Allow her to talk, yes. Miss Angie Mumford. Hi, good evening, all the way from Gaithersburg, Maryland. I'm watching in. <laughs> That's my cousin, Daryl. Um, <laughs> we still trying to figure out where we are in that family history. But um, my grandmother was Mary Daisy before she became the ward. I, that's as far as I know about her. I don't know what side she was on, but I am eager to find out. Yeah, I actually, met, I believe Mary Daisy was Alfred and Lydia's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. I have no clue. That's as far as I got because I never saw any of the family history except for that part of, part of it. She shows up on our family genealogy charts. Oh, good. There's at least a Mary Daisy. I don't know if it's a, it could be one generation back or forward, but there's definitely a Mary Daisy uh, who's a child of Lydia and Alfred Daisy. Okay. You're going to have to share that chart with me, but I appreciate your demonstration that you gave, and I'm looking forward to seeing some others. I think I see Miss Tomaine. Go right ahead. Also a cousin. <laughs> I'm Miss Tomaine. I'm Angela Mumford's daughter. Uh, I like that chart that you have up there, the Daisy family tree. Um, I was just wondering if I can get a copy of that so I can put the branches off onto that because I think my, like you said, my great, great, great Grandmother must have been Lydia. It's the mm -hmm. same one. My, I have a copy that your dad sent me, but it's some missing on there because he said yeah. that in 2013. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Can people grab? I don't know if people can grab it off of here or not. Yeah, there's See. a there's a hyperlink if you go to the agenda. You should be able to to pull down any of the graphics. Okay, but well, I couldn't mm -hmm. see. Um, mm -hmm. With so many pictures, it, it was difficult to email this this uh, presentation because it has so many pictures on it. it makes it a bigger um, file. presentation. Yeah. Wow, oh, yeah. Because, yeah, like I said, I have what your dad sent me back in 2013, dating so far back, and I couldn't see the uh, Daisy family trick. But you and Angela, can, you and Angela can help me with Mary Daisy's family. You can flush that out. I do have her. But I don't have it flushed out to your level. So any information you can provide would be helpful too. Okay. Because uh, I have that chart that your dad sent me and I can't figure it out. It's got some missing people, missing pieces of it. So maybe one day I can get with you, probably can yeah. fill in the blanks. Just message me on Facebook and we'll, we'll communicate. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else online? Yeah, we have Sarah. Is that minor? Hi, yes, this is Sarah Minor. I'm Daryl's sister. Hey, Just sis. Be, hi, Daryl. <laughs> Just being on behalf of the family, we know how many pictures we gave to Daryl when we were cleaning out my parents' house. There was a tremendous amount of pictures that he had to weed through and try to identify. And the amount of work that he did to put this all together just makes us very proud. I just wanted to say that. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, big sis. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else? Usually the, the raised hands will rise to the top. To the top. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I know that I, I did see... Um, um, Blaine's um, wife on, and um, so that would be 
uh, the Vern and Daisy <laughs> link there, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> So uh, I'm just happy that we've had uh, so many people I see uh, signed on, and I hope this presentation, and I know Daryl's very proud of it and, I, and, and has uh, enlightened and educated and gave substance to um, Black History Month and the history of Lewis. I think, Thank and you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at Blue and see if she can tell me if I'm right. I think that Blue can edit the meeting video and do a clip of just Daryl's presentation. I can do whatever you want. And uh -huh. see, it's really good to have talented people because I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, and then put that that presentation video on our website so that you know, put it on the. Um, we can link it from our homepage, but we can also put it on the Lewis African American Heritage Commission portion of our website. I can do that tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Well, anyway, there's no more questions. Thanks, folks. Much appreciated. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank can we you. clap now? Yes. <laughs>